This game is called Can You Circle with a, a pink marker. Can you circle the numbers? Um, I've got a whole bunch of numbers here, and, and the game is simple. Uh, the game is called Can You Circle the Numbers? And uh, let me think about this. Uh, you, you have to look at each one of these and ask yourself, is that a number? And if it is, you circle it. Uh, let's see. Um, if if this is a five, is that is that a, a number? And um, if you have to think about it, uh, check your calculator. But I, th I think it is a number, so you would circle that. Perfect. That, that game was pretty easy there. Uh, pi is pi a number? Yeah, it's it's, it's an, exactly the number of uh, radii that fit in half a circle. Uh, so so yes, that it, that would be a number. It's approximately 3.14. This one is also a number. This one is also a number. E is also a number. It's approximately 2.71828. Uh, and then you start to get some more interesting ones here, like uh, like log. Is, is log a number? If it is, wh which number is it? Is it 2? Is it 3? Is it 4? Uh, you start to think about it, and this one's a, a little bit trickier. I actually, I think I think maybe it's not a number, so I'm going to hold off a judgment on that one. How about this one? Si uh, log of 100. Is that a number? Well, by definition, that would be the exponent needed on 10 to get to 100. And uh, I think that number is equal to 2. Um, if, if you're kind of rusty on your logs, you just check the log of 100 is exactly 2. So, so indeed, this would be a number. That number is equal to 2. So I would circle it. Um, let's check sine of pi over 2. That would be a ratio of uh, opposite to a uh, hypotenuse on a uh, reference triangle for 90 degrees. Uh, and that ratio would turn out to be just a plain number. In fact, I think this number is equal to 1. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1, so so this is equal to 1, so I would I would circle it. Um, this one, a sign, I'm not sure if, well, it's actually not a number. Uh, it's not 1, it's not 2, it's not 3, it's not any number at all. In fact, um, this is not a number. This is what we call the function, a function whose domain is angles and ranges ratios. So this, would you would absolutely not, not circle, this is not a number. This is called a function, okay? This is a function, so you would not circle it. And this is also a function, so you would not circle it. Um, now, here's something absolutely, absolutely important. These numbers behave like numbers, and they do everything that numbers do. These functions are not numbers, so you cannot expect them to behave like numbers do. They don't. They behave like functions do. They are totally different animals. Okay? Let, let me show you uh, what I mean by that. Suppose I had... Uh, let's take 5, for example. Suppose I had 5x... Uh, I don't know. 5x is equal to 7. Um, this is a number 5, and that's x, and that's equal to 7. So, suppose you wanted to solve for, for uh, x. Okay? You would do what you do with numbers. You you would do uh, you would divide both sides by one fifth. So so you would multiply this side by one fifth, and this side by one fifth, so that you could clear the coefficient. And you'd get these two cancel out, just like numbers do. And you get x is equal to seven or five. Right, now you've done this in in grade school, uh, I'm sure. Well, why are we making a big deal about it now? Because I'm trying to emphasize that all these little games that you played in grade school, they're great for grade school. They're great for numbers, but they are not great for functions. Specifically, suppose you had log x is equal to 7. Log is not a number. So if you go on and play these uh, these games, like you're going to... Uh, like they were, they were numbers, you, you would... Uh, maybe, if, if you're naive about it, you may try to do 1 over log and uh, 1 over log on both sides so you can cancel this. This is totally, totally wrong. You cannot play this game. You, you can't divide both sides by log as you could divide both sides by 5 over here. That's because logs do not behave like numbers because they are not numbers. They're functions. Okay? Same thing with sine. Suppose you have uh, sine uh, x equals uh, point, uh, 0.5. Okay? Do not treat this number like a, do not treat sine like a number. It is not a number. You cannot divide both sides by, by um, but you can't divide both sides by sine. If you try to play this game, I'll divide this side by sine, 
and that side by sign you're, you're going off into la la land it's, it, you're gonna get the wrong results so so this the whole topic for the section is sort of a cautionary topic it's just some observations some things to be careful about don't ever ever do this um, you cannot even though you could do it here you know if this was pi any other number if or any number for example if you had the square root of 3 times x equals 0 0.5 this would be legal you could do point you could do divide this by square root of 3 and this by square root of 3 that would be certainly legal and you could cancel that and solve for x but it, it it's legal here but it's not legal here and the crucial difference is that this square root of 3 is a number sine is is not a number um, it's a function okay and then uh, let, let me expand that just a little bit more uh, what if you had this uh, sine of pi over 2 uh, times x is equal to 7 here let me ask you this could you divide both sides by sine pi over 2 sine pi over 2 is that a legal step well the, the answer is if this sine pi over 2 is a number yes you could divide by any number you want and and then uh, we go back to our game that we started at the beginning is that a number? Yes, it is a number. That number is the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. In fact, we talked about it. That that number is actually equal to one. So, so this this would be definitely okay. You can uh, you can divide both sides by sine pi over two, but you cannot divide both sides by sine. They are totally different um, different animals. Uh, so, so just make sure you're you're really good at, at playing this game. Um, can, you know, understand what a number is and what's a function. They are different animals, and and then you, with functions you can. You don't want to pretend that they're numbers, so I'll try to apply all the axioms or rules for numbers. Here's another easy example. Um, this example will show uh, talks about commutativity properties. All right, so so suppose you had. Um, uh, 5 times x. Is that the same thing as x times 5? Well, you, you may have heard of it. This is called the commutativity law of multiplication. 5 times any number would be the same thing as the first number times 5. This is fine and dandy for real numbers. It works nicely for real numbers, even for polynomials. But when you try to apply it to, to, to uh, functions, it just doesn't work that way. If you have sine x, you cannot play this game say this is x sine it just you, you you're trying to apply the commutativity property to functions and nobody ever ever said that functions were commutative we know that numbers are commutative but nobody ever said that functions were commutative so so if you try to play this game you're you're going into some dangerous territory okay you don't ever ever want to do that you always always want to be aware of what's a number and what's a function and, and you treat each one um, as what they are now let's follow that, that same theme here. Suppose you had uh, sine of x, the quantity, times 3. Is that the same thing as 3 times sine of x, that quantity? And that would be okay. This is actually okay, where that was not okay, because, because this piece right here, sine of x is actually a number. It's the ratio that you get when you... Um, find the reference triangle uh, for x degrees and you take the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse it's actually a number, it's a ratio, so you could treat it like a number um, sine x is a number, but sine by itself it's not so so this would be okay uh, another example suppose you had uh, let me think uh, suppose that you had something like this Okay, so let's see uh, if we can play this game some more uh, here. The question is, is it legal to cross out the sine x and the sine x? Um, and usually it is legal when you're crossing out a number here and you got a product on top and a product on the bottom. So long as you really are crossing out a number. So the question is, is sine x a number or not? And the answer is yes it is, so that would be okay. That's okay. Here, uh, you got the number n and you got that number n. Is it legal to cross out... Uh, this number n and that number n and the question is absolutely not you're doing some crazy stuff if you're doing this um, you, you know you'd get six out of that but s i x six but that's crazy because uh, 
the n on the top was not representing a number, it was representing part of the function, sine function, so you never ever want to do crazy things like this unless you're feeling crazy and you don't care about the rules. Um, but uh, so, so here is illegal to cross out the n's. Yeah, the implication here is that n is a number, x is a number, n is a number. Here it's okay, no problem. Not here, because n was not a number on that case. Question is here, can you cross out this uh, x? Uh, and, and the answer is no, because this is not multiplication, this is composition. Uh, this is a uh, sine of x, not sine times x. And so, if sine is not even a number, this whole piece is in some sense glued together, sine of x. You got you got to think about this piece as so almost glued together, sine of x. It's a certain ratio, certain number. So there, you cannot cross out. If you cross out those, you'll, you're making a big, big sin. S i n sin. So you, you don't want to do that. Uh, here, is it okay if I have a number a times a number b times a number two times a number x? Can I switch those around and move the two to the outside? The answer is yes. If A and B are regular numbers, you can do that. That would be called associativity law of multiplication and also commutativity law of multiplication. You commute it and reassociate it. So this is okay to do. But here, my friends, can I again commute the sign and the two? Can I switch that over and pull the two? And the answer is absolutely not. You, you cannot do that because sine is not a number. If it was a number, you could do it. Just like if a times b turns out to be a number, you could do it. But sine is not a number. Sine is a function. So this would be totally illegal. As a matter of fact, we will be spending the next month uh, learning uh, exactly what happens when you double the angle. How does sine x compared with sine of double the angle, sine of twice x? This is a huge topic for us in our trick class. It all, it's almost uh, one of the central themes. Um, remember, there were ser several themes. One was solving triangles, and the other one was studying these functions, and this will be a crucial part of that study. So so you do this is totally wrong. You need to be very, very cautious uh, not to uh, not to treat sine a, a number. That's why this game you started off with is so, so crucial. Um, can you circle the numbers? You know, the numbers you can do whatever you want. You can cancel them out, you can commute them, you can associate them. You can divide both sides of an equation by you can do everything that you've ever always done with numbers, but you don't want to do those sort of things with functions. They do not behave like uh, like numbers. Other th other things that you should be aware of are these uh, these exponents. Uh, let me let me talk a little bit about the uh, exponents. Uh, suppose you've got uh, sine of of uh, x times x, where that's the argument, sine of x times x. Uh, another way to, to write that would be to say that that's the same thing as uh, sine of x squared. So most of the time it's a good idea to keep these parentheses there so you know exactly what the angle is. Uh, you're, you're here you're making it very clear that the angle is the quantity x squared. Uh, now wh what would happen if you wanted to, how would you write sine x times sine x. So here you're taking sine of the angle x times that same thing, sine of the angle x. People will usually write this differently. They'll write it, although you could write it this way, sine x the quantity squared. That would be acceptable. Um, but it's, it's not customary. Um, it, it is more typical to write, to put this exponent here on the um, next to this n. So people will usually write sine with the 2 there x and that is uh, the way the notation has has been used for for centuries this represents sine x times sine x I've been using sine a lot really there's nothing special about sine tangent to the third x you should know exactly what that means when people write that they're talking about sine x or sorry tangent x times tangent x times tangent x that is exactly what people are referring to when they write tangent to the third x um, of course, it's it, it's it's a little crazy because there there is one exception to this exponent deal. Um, before I get to the exponent, let me write a couple more things. Suppose you have a cosine um, to the fourth power of two x. What in the world does that mean? Well, that that means. Uh, 
cosine of 2x times itself cosine 2x times itself four times cosine twice x times I'll continue here cosine twice x that that's exactly what that means so so that's how we handle these exponents if, if the exponents are here they mean that the x is being multiplied times itself twice like this if the exponents are next to the n or you know before the argument for the angle it means you're writing the whole thing three times just like that um, there, there, there is one exception to that, and that, that would be when people write sine to the negative 1 of x. Here, it, it, notation is kind of confusing because uh, you, you might think at first that this means 1 over uh, sine x, just like the other notation, but, but actually if you do that, that's, that's totally, totally wrong. So, so people will never, ever, or it's not customary to write things that way. Okay. Usually, when people want to write this, the uh, one over sine x, they will write um, uh, cosecant x. That would be acceptable. That's, and usually, when people want to write this, what what they mean is uh, the arc, the arc sine of x, which means um, the the composition inverse. Not this is the multiplicative inverse. But what people mean when they write that negative one there is mean they mean composition inverse, meaning that. Um, here, if uh, sine inverse x is equal to y, this means that y is the angle such that sine of that angle gives you x. Or, said differently, this means this means that sine of y is equal to x. Okay, so this is uh, composition inverse. Uh, that's that little button on your on your calculator. Um, we talked about that before, the inverse functions, um, that, that's what they mean. So, um, just a couple uh, words of caution here. Make sure you understand the notation. It's one really important thing. Uh, for the exponents, make sure you know that there is an exception. When you have negative 1, that doesn't mean you flip it. It means the, the, the composition inverse. It means arc, arc sine, arc cotangent, arc tangent, arc stuff. And the other thing is make sure you know uh, which ones are, are numbers and, and make sure you can play this game where if somebody writes uh, you know 7 times the square root of 2 or 5 times sine of 1.3 or sine, make sure you're, you're able to, uh, or, or cosine for that matter, make sure you, you're good at noticing which ones are numbers. You, make sure you can circle the number this is a number, uh, this is a number, this is not a number, and this is not a number, so you, you don't go on and, and treat them like numbers. Uh, just a little word of caution and some, some uh, traditional notation. Okay, uh, You should be able to do the homework now. Um, we're we're going to get started on a bunch of uh, these really, really important identities. So, um, we'll see you guys here soon. Peace.